Hello and welcome back to 30 Days to Learn Photoshop. This is day 12, the Bucket and Gradient Tools. I'm Ben Gribbin and in today's lesson we're going to look at the basics of the Gradient and Bucket tools. So let's switch straight to Photoshop and let's get on with the lesson. So what are the Bucket and Gradient tools? Well, Bucket tool you've probably seen in programs like Microsoft Paint and, and things like that. It essentially just fills in a large area with colour. Uh, it can do it by an empty layer, which it will fill with it, an entirely solid colour, or on photographs it will do something along the lines of this. So let's just select the colour as black and fill in an area, and you'll notice it's actually filling in segments of the photograph rather than Microsoft Paint style, where it just go over the entire area. So you fill in large areas with a solid colour, and the gradient tool very similar except it does gradients as it says on its label. So we're going to look through how we use them now. We're going to start by looking at the paint bucket tool. If you press G that's its shortcut and also pressing shift G will cycle through the gradient and bucket tools. So how do you use it? Well you see you've got these options along the top. It's got a mixture of options that are similar to uh, the brush tool in terms of the blending mode you can have and also things like the opacity and then it's got things that are similar to the magic wand tool which we're going to consider in one of the next lessons and that's along these options here so we're going to look through those now so the foreground color is just showing that it's going to fill the whatever you're filling with a color rather than a pattern you can use it to fill with patterns let me just quickly show you that now just use any old pattern you can see it's filling in the image with a pattern there. The mode similar to um, brushes you can actually have it work as, um, let's show you, you can have it to do a dissolve fill which is kind of really rough and noisy and also it will do behind and clears as well. So the opacity that does what it says on the tin it just changes the opacity that you're actually filling in there so you can see we're actually keeping some of the detail from the clouds because we've dropped the opacity. Now the tolerance sets how selective the paint bucket tool is because it works on calculating the colours and tones and, and highlights and all sorts of things to try and work out what you want filling. So the tolerance you set will actually change the amount it will uh, fill and, and in effect changes its tolerance. So we've got it on 20 there, that's quite a low tolerance. If we were to change it to say for example 100 when we then go and fill in a colour, it, it selects more colours, it ignores the shades and things like that. It's a little bit more flexible and as you can see this has actually filled in the sky there a little bit more effectively. So you will need to tweak about with the tolerance. I think the default is 32, so if you leave it on that it's usually pretty decent. Anti-alias, well let me just show you what that does. If we turn it off, you can see we've got rough, let's just put it on normal colour mode, you can see we've got rough, pixely, really jagged edges. If we turn it back on again, it does very, very slightly smoothen those out fractionally. And contiguous works on pockets of colour. So for example, because we've got these grey clouds here, when we click on them, all of these are connected. These clouds here are separated by a different tone, a different shade, so it doesn't transfer the colour to that. If we untick contiguous, it will then select every cloud that has this sort of grey, darker grey colouring. So it will end up filling those areas as well. If we click on that. So it's managed to jump across areas that aren't connected. So it's a little bit quicker, um, but it will end up filling in areas like down here. So you've got to be a bit more careful when you're using uh, contiguous off. And all layers just samples all layers and fills in all layers if you have more than one. You can use the bucket tool in conjunction with the marquee tools and selection tools. So you can create an area that you want to fill and you can just go ahead and fill that like so. And then when we deselect that, you'll notice it's filled in an area but masked it off to our selection. So that's quite handy. If you want to fill an entire area with your foreground color or background color, let's just say because on a photograph, it doesn't do it all as one solid color, Press Command Backspace to do your background colour and Alt Backspace fills in your foreground colour. So 
what about the grab tool well the grab tool creates gradients so if we press shift G we can cycle to it and these are the options we have along the top we've got presets that we can make for gradients you can save your own along there and these are some of the Photoshop default gradients that are included now you can edit these if you go on to the preset manager and you can rename them resize them all kinds of stuff if you double click on the actual color uh, gradient here it will take you to a gradient editor now that helps you to be able to more accurately edit a gradient so along here is your opacity of the gradient and along here is the actual uh, where the gradient happens how sharp it is and this brings it into almost a near line this will bring it more biased towards the uh, background color in order to change that just double click on it and you get the color palette and you can enter any colors you want on the scale and then that adds that in and then you can just tweak about with the, the different options along there so that's how you actually edit a gradient if you want to change the colors of your gradient very quickly just set your foreground color to one color your background color to another and the built-in defaults will actually automatically update you can also do a transparent one which is very handy um, and then across here we have all the different gradient types so let's just show you those now we've got a normal linear gradient so that looks that looks like this we've got a radial gradient which creates like a, um, a circle that fades out very gently we've got a diamond gradient which creates a hard line with a gradient that curves around and fades out and a reflected gradient which creates the kind of a bar of a gradient in the middle and then finally this diamond gradient which creates a diamond shape gradient so in order to use this tool it's very simple a little bit tricky to get the hang of though all you do is you click and draw a line now this line can be drawn in 360 degrees and depending on the length and direction it actually affects the gradient so if we go straight down quite short the gradient kicks in in that line so if we do it longer the gradient will fade from the, the foreground color to the background color within the space we're setting here so you can see it's a much longer gradient there if we want to add an angle to our gradient we can do that by just changing the direction we're pointing and remembering that the length also makes a big difference so we're going to show you how we can practically use the gradient tool now we're going to repair this cloud scene here because we've actually got some vignetting on the end of the or the corner of the photograph thanks to our camera so what we're going to do is we're going to select the white or really really light blue color from the clouds down here then we're just going to switch the colors so that's set that to the background color remember we talked about that if you press x you can switch your background and foreground colors and then we're going to select our foreground color as one of the blues up here the highest blue we can get to really and what we've already done is we have cut out the sky from uh, an additional layer so we've got this original layer here which is the original photograph and we've got this cut out section here which is everything but the sky so what we can do now is on this layer we can recreate the sky gradient and hopefully remove this vignetting so we're going to start about here with our line we're going to drag it straight down and if you want to create perfectly aligned gradients i.e. you want them straight down diagonally or horizontally if you press your gradient tool and then hold shift whilst you're doing that and essentially it gives you nine different options you've got straight up you've got diagonal ones and you've got horizontal ones so that will make sure your gradients are perfectly aligned so let's just redo that let's start up at the top we're going to get our gradient to start fading out to white somewhere down here and you can actually start the gradient lower down if you wanted to so it takes a little bit of practice but play around with the gradient tool because once you do get used to it it works an absolute treat so you can see there we've kind of replaced and repaired the sky so that it now looks 
much better than it did before with this vignetting on there. As with all the other tools, you've got a couple of uh, options for how it works and also the color modes, they've all the different color modes accessible from this tool. So you can do behind gradients, uh, which you can't see because it's behind that one, and also a dissolve one, which will give it a much more jagged, noisy appearance. You've got opacity, so you can set the actual opacity of the entire gradient and you can add multiple gradients over the top of each other then. And you can reverse the colours. If you want to quickly reverse between your current settings, if you click reverse on the options bar, you can see there it's just reversing the way our colours are going. And then again, dither. This just helps smoothen out any banding. If we turn that off, you can see we have got some light banding across here. Whereas if we turn it on again, it does help to smoothen it out, especially on these longer gradients. And that's just because of the way colours are displayed on computers. And then transparency, if we untick that when we enter our transparent gradient, it won't actually work as a transparent colour. It'll just simply fill over the entire thing. What have we learned in today's lesson? Well, we've considered how to use the bucket and the gradient tools, looked at all the basics of those and all the different settings and options we have. So your task for this lesson is to practice filling a layer with colour using the bucket tool and do that by doing a mass colour application. Also practice on a photograph, just adding in colours where you uh, want to do. And then also practice making different gradients, experimenting with colours and tie to colour changes. Next time on 30 Days to Learn Photoshop, we'll be looking at the lasso and marquee tools. Thanks for listening.